It's uh, fluorescent black. Uh, it's uh, going to be distributed through Heavy Metal. It's a special edition uh, that's coming, uh, debuting at San Diego. It'll still hit the newsstands and regular circulation and pub publication. Uh, they're going to have a uh, special edition wraparound cover for everyone that's at the Comic Con. I think anywhere between 2,500 and 5,000 will be given out uh, over all those days. Uh, so they went all out. Uh, Jeremy Cox is the colorist. Uh, MF Wilson, Matt Wilson is the writer. And uh, this is part one of a uh, two part series. Uh, and uh, the first part's hidden through uh, heavy metal at that, uh, at that con. It's a bio sci fi punk story that takes place in Malaysia. Uh, genetics has taken over. Bodies are now worth something as opposed to uh, normal business. I mean, everything is based around science in this, in this area. Singapore. Uh, being the uh, perfect, clean society it always was, has turned into a utopia of, of uh, science, evolution, cloning, and genetic manipulation. Uh, and Johar Baru is the shipping point where all that is bad and not genetically accepted uh, is taken. So, you know, any kind of debilitating natural disease you might have, you'll end up in Johar Baru. So, perfection's being specified and, and taken care of and uh, heightened in Singapore and everything else is in Johar Baru. The main characters are uh, the Butchers. Uh, it's a gang in Johar Baru. Uh, you start out meeting Max, which is the lead character. Uh, he is British and so is his uh, sister. Uh, pretty much a twin. And uh, they're, they're cast uh, into this uh, society because of an ailment that Max has. Uh, and you, you start to find out more about the Butchers, but uh, Max and uh, Blue, uh, his sister, are the two main characters. And then there's uh, uh, Holiday, uh, which is a uh, kind of a brutish uh, pension for violence character. And uh, Lovely, who's a, uh, well, I won't ruin it, people will find out who Lovely is. And uh, yeah, a couple of other smatterings of characters. Uh, Anja is the lead scientist. and evil bad doer in this entire scenario, uh, but uh, he's not the only one. Uh, there's Mr. No Name, who I love. Uh, you, you'll see his teeth if you, you'll recognize him straight off the bat. There is potential for that, but uh, it definitely has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And these, these, this first 48 pages sets up everything that happens in the last 72, and the first 48 are, uh, it's uncensored, it's no holds barred, heavy metal, back to you know, back to basics as it as it goes. I mean, sex and violence throughout, but there there's a purpose for it. It's actually ingrained in the culture and society that's been established between uh, you know the the the, uh, the Singapore location, the Johar Baru location. So it's not it's not uh, unwarranted, uh, and the and it it is it is a pretty heady uh, uh, content, but it's it's well worth the story. Uh, that, that Matt wrote. It, it, was, it was a necessity in order to tell this story. And Johar Baru has been taken over by such uh, mutation manipulation. Uh, Anja, in one of the flashbacks, the evildoer, he's, uh, for his birthday, he gets a gene sequencer. And, you know, like, uh, uh, kids grew up with Legos, he grew up with genes. I mean, they were just the building blocks, so he's, he's manipulating uh, animals, creating his own, cloning. Uh, the, uh, intensifying his own body and uh, beefing up his own genetics and DNA sequence and uh, that's the kind of manipulation and power that that uh, the rich and, and powerful have and he's he's definitely the catalyst for where Singapore ends up and Johar Baru on the other hand still has the same technology because it's now become cheap everything's relying on it and it's a drug-based society everyone in Johar Baru wants to get to Singapore uh, in order to do that it's drugs, you know, it's like pharmaceuticals versus street drugs, you know, except in, except in this scenario, the pharmaceuticals are genetic altering, and the street drugs are genetic altering, but they're completely synthesized. Every, everything that happens in uh, Johar Baru is, excuse me, Johar Baru, uh, is, uh, is altered by the people that live there, and, and the city's basically been turned into a jungle. It was a slum to begin with. Now the jungle and everything, because there's no law and order, there's no anything. It's survival of the fittest, and, and the plants are fighting back. Uh, hybrids like uh, 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 pot and poison ivy have been mixed, and the weed grows everywhere. And uh, 
they smoke it, they sell it. There's all kinds of survival tactics. I mean, if you can imagine being dropped into a city that was a slum to begin with and there's no law and order, how far would you go to survive? And, and uh, you know, the, the sense improving yourself and getting to perfection is the main focus. Organs, blood, parts, anything is up for grabs and of value. There is something that's really different from how I'm handling like pigeons or any of the DMZ stuff, although it's probably closer to more the DMZ kind of tactile gritty style, because everything is dirty there. Uh, you know, except in Singapore, and which is interesting because in the in the story, I have to separate the two just as much as Jeremy has to in colors. They have to clash. Like purity and, and minimalism has to crash with completely over the top jungle tribal you know, colors and situations. So when the two clash, I mean, it's, the book's almost, I mean, it's, it's called fluorescent black, but there should be neon colors in the book. It's, it's kind of that wild, or at least a, you know, set up to be that way. And especially from, I, unfortunately I couldn't go there to do much research, but from what I've read and, and uh, everything that I've found, you know, online and in books and stuff, the, the colors are really as much of a character and culture as anything else. Just straight off visually from people who don't, you know, who've never been there, you know, much like myself or, you know, anything else, just kind of coming across it. So I, I really wanted to capture some of that in there, especially in terms of the lettering. I ended up doing, uh, drawing the word balloons as well to kind of give it that tactile feel. And, and uh, Sean Conat kicked out an amazing font to go with it. And, you know, Jeremy and I kind of went back and forth on um, uh, collaboration with the, with the color scheme. And once he once he got rolling, it was, it, it just it really made the book. So I, you know, to, to I, I I don't really know what to compare it to because every like if I say Kniff, then I'm gonna have to cross reference that with like what if he did Blade Runner? You know, it's not it's not it doesn't really make that much sense. But I mean, it, the the book definitely has that kind of hybrid you know Blade Runner relation. But it, but it's 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 definitely I mean it's it's very different. Uh, from that specifically, but to kind of find something to compare it to, that that's probably going to be the first thing people start thinking about. Part two should come out uh, in, I believe, the spring uh, or early next year, and then uh, it'll be collected uh, and uh, debut as a graphic novel, I believe, in at San Diego next year has been the, the rumor, but I can't confirm all of that uh, yet because we're, we're still kind of working on it. Uh, but uh, if, if everybody ends up liking the first 48, then they better grab a seat and hold on to their hat because it, it only sets up more, more, of, more of the like of what it is and gets, uh, gets a, lot, a lot hotter and a, and a lot more intense.